Hey guys, what's up today? We got a double integral application. We're going to find moment of inertia. So the, the moment of inertia is really just how easy or how hard it is for an object to rotate about a specific axis. Like if we want to look at something rotating around the x-axis or rotating around the y-axis or rotating around any axis that you want to define, um, we we want to know how easy or how hard is it to get that thing rotating, that lamina. So this is going to be a lamina in that it's it's negligibly thick. So the area really determines the the density. So knowing the density is just a function of the area, not really the thickness, helps us uh, determine the moment of inertia for a lamina. Let's look at an example here. Our example says, find the moment of inertia of the half disk lamina. We want to find the moment of inertia of that object or that lamina about, first of all, the x-axis. So how hard is it or how easy is it to get this thing rotating around the x-axis? And then about the origin, how easy or how hard is it to get this thing rotating around the origins? All right, so let's look at our definitions of the moments of inertia about the x-axis and the moment of inertia about the origin. The density is given here as 3 over square root of x squared plus y squared. So the moment of inertia about the x-axis has to do with how much um, the distribution varies in the y direction because in the y direction, if it's varying a lot, then we're going to have more and more inertia. We're going to have, it's going to be harder to get this thing rotating if the mass is distributed in the y direction. So this moment about the x-axis is all about how the mass is distributed in the y direction. And then the moment about the origin is all about how the square of the distance from the origin is going to be taken into account when we distribute the mass. So how is the mass distributed as far as like our distance away from the origin? All right, so first of all, we need to look at the region of integration so we can get the bounds for our double integral. The region of integration is circular. That's going to imply that we need to use polar coordinates. So we need to describe these bounds of our region using polar coordinates. So if we have the x-axis right here, we have the y-axis, then our radius is going to go from 1 to 2. So our radius is going from 1 to 2 for every angle that we have. So for every angle, our radius goes from 1 to 2. So r is going to go from 1 to 2. Our theta values are going to go from this axis, which we could call negative pi over 2, to positive pi over 2. So nice one nice continuous region for theta would be negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. We could use 3 pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2, but that's a little less preferable. So we'll use negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for theta. So negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for theta. All right, so we got our bounds. Now all we got to do is change our integrals, um, our integrands to polar coordinates. So rho is equal to 3 over square root of x squared plus y squared. So it's actually inversely proportional to the distance from the origin. So that's just 3 over r. So actually as we get closer to the origin, we get more and more mass. And the further, we, the further away we get from the origin, the less mass we have. All right, so that, that's our density function rewritten in polar coordinates. So now let's calculate i sub x. i sub x is equal to the integral over the region r y squared rho dA. Now let's convert everything to polar coordinates. Integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Integral from 1 to 2. Y, well y is r sine theta, so this can be r squared sine squared theta. Rho is 3 over r, and dA is r dr d theta. All right, so we're going to have some cancellations here. We have a cancellation with this r. So we have r squared sine squared, and we have a 3. So let's pull out the 3. And since this is a product of functions with constant bounds, we can separate the integrals by integrand r and theta. So this is going to equal, so i sub x still, this is i x, 3 integral minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 sine squared theta d theta. 
and I'll go from 1 to 2 r squared dr now the first one we have to use a trig identity so the trig identity we want to use is sine squared theta is equal to 1 half 1 minus cosine 2 theta All right and then we want to integrate r we get r cubed over 3 so this is going to be 3 times integral negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 1 half 1 minus cosine 2 theta d theta and r cubed over 3 from 1 to 2. This 3 and this 1 third are going to cancel and cancel these two. All right, so then 2 cubed is 8 minus 1 is 7, so this is going to equal 7 times 1 half times. Integral of 1 is theta minus integral of cosine 2 theta is 1 half sine 2 theta. And that's going to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So this turns into 7 halves times, well, plug in pi over 2 minus negative pi over 2 is pi over 2 plus pi over 2 minus 1 half. And we could put a parenthesis here, sine of 2 times pi over 2 is just pi minus sine of negative pi. So these are both zero. So this is zero. This is zero. This is just going to be pi times seven halves. So we just get seven pi over two. So this is seven pi over two. It's all about the units here, is this, is this really a big number? Is this not a big number? Well, we need to know what the actual units are for this density function to know whether or not this is really a large or small moment of inertia. We could maybe compare it to the y-axis and figure out which one is larger. I would anticipate that the y-axis moment of inertia would be larger since there's not a balance of the mass on each side. Spinning it around the x-axis should be a little easier than spinning it around the y-axis. So let's look at the moment of inertia about the origin. So this is going to equal to integral negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, integral 1 to 2. Now x squared plus y squared is just r squared, so this is r squared times 3 over r, r dr d theta. All right, so we've got another nice cancellation that's going to happen here. This r is going to cancel. So then we just have 3 r squared from 1 to 2 and then d theta from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So we can split this up again. Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, d theta. Integral 1 to 2, 3r squared dr. This is going to be pi over 2 plus pi over 2. I'm going to integrate that, so that one's easy. And then integral of r squared is going to be r cubed over 3, but that 3 is going to cancel with this 3 here. So 3 r cubed over 3 from 1 to 2. All right, so this is going to equal pi. And this is going to equal, so these 3s cancel. So this is going to be 8 minus 1. This is just going to be 7 pi. So we can say that the moment of inertia about the origin is larger than the moment of inertia about the x-axis. So it's more difficult to get this thing to spin around the origin than it is to spin around the x-axis. There's no symmetry in the lamina about the origin, although there is symmetry for the density function. The lamina does not extend around to the other side. It's a harder to get this thing to spin around the origin than it is to spin around the x-axis. So that's moments of inertia.